I would like to show you what an evolutionarily unstable game theory game looks like. And of course, evolutionary games happen in a context where, I mean, they happen in an evolutionary environment. Typically, this might be an animal environment where you have animals with certain instincts. Like, let's say gerbils. You've got gerbils who could either use strategy A or use strategy B. And the payoffs in a table of an evolutionary game are going to be basically the number of babies that that type of animal has. And that's because the evolutionary success of a particular animal type depends on whether uh, their percentage of the population grows or shrinks over time. Because even if there's a slight tendency for one type to win out over the other, over time that will lead that part of the population to grow and grow and grow until it crowds out the other type. That's the basic logic here. Now you can solve this game for the mixed strategies Nash equilibrium, and of course the mixed strategies happens where p percent of the population is type A and 1 minus p percentage of the population is type B. And the game theory solution to this game is that 50% of the population will be A types and 50% will be B types. And that means if you have a population where exactly 50% of the population every generation is uh, A, then nothing's going to change. However, if you have a situation where one generation, because of random variance, we get 51% of the population is type A, or 45% of the population is type A, the question is, will we tend back toward the 50%, or will that bump away from 50% lead to an evolutionary process that eventually leads to 0% of the population being A or B? And of course, we're going to represent that on this graph by, if we, if we bump a little bit over here, if we go back to 50%, we're going to represent that by arrows going back. This would be a stable equilibrium if no matter how far we bumped on both sides, we ended up tending back towards 50%. That would be stable. Now, you can probably tell from the title of this video, this one is going to be an unstable equilibrium. And unstable equilibriums happen where once you bump a little bit away, you tend toward one extreme or another. This would be sort of a representation of an unstable equilibrium. Now, how do you figure out whether this particular game is stable or unstable? And you basically do it by picking a point on both sides of the equilibrium and saying, if you randomly end up at this point, will the population tend toward uh, 50% or will it tend toward uh, 0%? So let's do that. And I usually just pick the easiest numbers to work with, so we're going to do 25% and 75%. So we'll start out by finding the payoffs to both players, the A types and the B types, when P equals 25% when we're in this spot on our diagram. So if you're an A type, your payoff is going to be the probability of encountering another A times the payoff if you encounter another A, plus the probability that you encounter a B type, that's 75% here, times your payoff if you encounter a B type. So that's an expected payoff of 1, and we want to compare this to the expected payoff of the B type in this situation. That's the payoff two-player B, given that P equals 25% in this little hypothetical scenario we're doing now. And that payoff to B is going to be equal to the percentage of the population that's A-type times your payoff if you encounter an A-type, plus the percentage of the population that's a B-type, that's 75%, times your payoff if you encounter a B-type. So the payoff to the B players is 3, the payoff to the A players is 1. And what this means is, if we're at 25%, the, the Bs have an advantage, and therefore the population will evolve to have more and more Bs. So the question is, where does that put us on this spectrum? Oh, and I should have labeled this, this is the P percent. So down here we're at 0%. Here we're at 25% A-types, here we're at 50% A-types. So if the Bs have an advantage, if we're standing right here at the 25% mark, and the Bs have the advantage, the question is what happens to P, what happens to the percentage of As in the population? And of course, if Bs have the advantage, we're going to get fewer and fewer As, so we're moving in this direction. That means everywhere below the 50% 
mark if we bump a little bit below we're going to tend towards zero percent A's. Now we have to do the same exercise for what happens if we're at 75 percent so let's do that. In this case the payoff to player A is going to be the percentage of the population that's A, in this case that's 75 percent, times the payoff to the A players if they encounter another A, that's four, plus the percentage of the population that's B, that's 25 percent, times the payoff to the A players if they encounter a B, and that payoff is three, so now we'll do the same thing for the B players. The B player's payoff is probability of encountering an A type times payoff if they encounter an A type plus probability of encountering a B type times payoff if they encounter a B type. This means if we find ourselves at 75% of the population being A types, then the A types will have an advantage over the B types. The A types have an expected payoff of three children, and three children is way more than one ch child. So that means we're going to tend toward the population increasing its percentage of A types over time. And of course, that will, that will lead to a population where the A types crowd out the B types, the B types go extinct. So in which case, we have our arrows moving away from our Nash, and therefore this is going to be an unstable Nash equilibrium.